Hello, this is the last part of the water section. So, what you need to be able to do is describe the multiple stages of the sewage treatment process. So, in the treatment of water, um, there was a number of stages. This is similar as well. So, um, just be able to talk through what exactly happens at the sewage treatment works. And in number eight, describe the possible uses of the sludge produced during sewage treatment. So, what we did before was this. So we had the water purification process with the screening and um, having your disinfectant added to it, eventually the um, uh, chlorine before it ends up in your home and is drinkable. What we're now looking at is this part. So sewage treatment is what goes down your, goes down the toilet, goes down the plug holes. What has to happen before that, that water, and remember we call that black water, um, what happens when that before that water goes back into you know natural systems, reservoirs, um, rivers, etc. And yes, here is our town. And just to give you an idea, in case you didn't know this, but up the back road there, that's where you find our sewage treatment works. Quite a nice view. So this is a kind of overview of the stages um, and we'll, we'll kind of break this down and, and go through them each individually. So the stages we call them up here, this is the preliminary stage. You can see we've got light water treatment, we've got screening to begin with. And then the primary stage, this is where we get the production of sludge. Then we have the secondary stage, and this produces methane gas. And also happening is what we call the tertiary stage. And you can see this involves the basically getting water that, that is safe to go back out to the river and the sea. So sewage treatment, preliminary, primary, secondary, and tertiary that we need to be able to discuss. So this is preliminary treatment. And what you have is the raw sewage, so that's the black water down the toilet and the grey water from down the sinks. So it goes through a screen. So anything that's ended up in the, you know, the sewers which shouldn't be there, and there is quite a lot, and we will watch a, vid a video later, um, um, which um, goes through what happens when people put oil down their sinks in the kitchen. Um, so this the screen removes grit and uh, bulky solids as well, so things like plastics. So this is our first part. So you can see sometimes you might have this grit chamber before everything goes through a screen. So you should hopefully be left with something that's more, um, it's going to be some solids in there, but it's going to be more liquid. Then you have the primary treatment. And if you ever go past um, sewage treatment work somewhere, this is the kind of what you would see. So first of all, you have sedimentation. So sedimentation, that removes any remaining solids because what happens is the water gets separated or the sewage gets separated into sludge and what we call a liquor, um, which um, you know what you call alcohol in America, but not that kind of liquor. So the sludge it will sink to the bottom, um, so it gets removed and treated, and then the liquor, the liquid that's left, it goes on to the next stage. And there's just if you were looking at it side on, this, this is what you would see. So the sludge goes to the bottom and gets siphoned off somewhere else, and then the liquor moves on to the next stage. So then we have secondary treatment. And this is where you start to use um, microorganisms. So this is called biological oxidation. So what happens is you have microorganisms, you have aeration, which means oxygen is mixed um, in, amongst the, in amongst the liquor. And what that does is it removes dissolved and suspended organic matter. So basically the microorganisms naturally start to break it down. Okay, And if there's any uh, sludge remaining, it's also taken away and then the liquor gets passed on again to the next stage. So here it is. Uh, you can sometimes collect methane. We'll talk about that later on. And there you've got your sludge being separated again. 
So the tertiary treatment, so what you have here is filtration and often it's just through stones. Um, so filtration removes any sort of suspended matter and toxins from the liquor and at this point it's now called effluent. So the effluent is just discharged into the sea. Okay, so not, obviously we're just treating sewage here, so all you're doing is producing um, water which is not going to do any harm to ecosystems and so on. It's not at this. It's not been through the water treatment process, so it's not drinkable or anything like that. So, as we went through it, we did produce sludge, didn't we? That was a byproduct, um, and you know you're going to produce a fair amount of it. So, you know, again, we're we're going to look at waste in the next as the next topic, and you've get you know you're going to have to incinerate it basically. Um, or dump it somewhere. So there are there are other uses for it, and one of them is to produce biogas. So if you take away oxygen and allow anaerobic digestion to occur, so microorganisms break break it down, um, and what happens is you get fermentation, and this produces biogas. So that's a source of energy, not clean but it's something that you could potentially do with the sludge so you could turn it into biogas using microorganisms again to generate electricity or heat. Something else you could do is use it as a fertilizer. I mean, it's, you know, it's, I guess it's an organic fertilizer, I suppose, isn't it? So that's one possibility. And this, which just kind of looks like people have been messing about and have <laughs> decided to produce some sort of uh, volcano out of human waste. I don't recommend that. Um, this is called sludge cake. So what you can do is you can incinerate that and it can be a source of energy as well. And similarly with the water treatment process, I've put a couple of, there's a couple of videos here. If you just search for these on YouTube, then, then you'll, they'll take you there. And it's just to give you, you know, experts talking you through the process and you can see actually what the different stages look like. So it's worth um, spending 10, 15 minutes having a watch of both of these. Okay, so these are the stages, preliminary, primary, secondary and tertiary. And what I would like you to do is write out what happens at each stage. So I've put in a couple of words um, for each of them to give you give you an idea and um, to help you. So um, write that out, four stages, and then either once you've done that, um, refer to your notes or go back earlier in the video and see if you have you have picked out the you've, you've got them all in sufficient detail. And once you've done that, have a break. Come back another day. Okay, so to begin with today, um, this is not about sewage. This is about um, the treatment of water. However, it's quite easy to get these mixed up. They're both made up of a similar number of stages. You've got sludge involved in both. So I just wanted to bring back the water treatment process just to try and help you separate it in your minds. Okay, so press pause and go through this. So you're looking for 10 mistakes and 10 one word mistakes and write in the correct answer. Okay, in order to prevent the spread of waterborne diseases, e.g. diabetes, that's not a waterborne disease, that um, something like uh, cholera would be um, more appropriate there. Many countries treat their water supplies before human usage. The water purification process is multiple stages. Developing countries tend to follow the full process, but developed countries may use a much reduced programme depending on resources. They are the wrong way around. So that should be developed and that should be developing. So number one, screening to remove smaller pieces of debris from surface water, that should be larger. Number two, coagulation and sludgulation, that word just is all wrong, isn't it? That should be flocculation. A coagulant chemical is added to cause small particles to clump together, forming and sludge, that should be flock. Then three, sedimentation allows the flock to settle out as sludge, which is disposed of. 
Four, filtration removes bacteria, parasites and any remaining particles suspended in the water. Developing countries, glass or sand filters. Developed countries, slow sand filtration or high pressure membrane filtration. So this should be ceramic. Ceramic filters are used in developing countries. And then finally, biodegradation to kill antibodies. So that should be disinfection. And the probably correct term here would be pathogens. But if you had bacteria or microorganisms, that would be okay. And in developing countries, caffeine tablets. Nope, that's chlorine tablets or solar disinfection. And the rest of it is correct. So that was the water treatment process um, before the water comes into your home. So the next thing to do is this. So press pause and compare it and write down the correct answers for the sewage treatment process. OK, so sewage is black water and number one, grey water, and it undergoes the following processes. So one preliminary treatment, raw sewage is passed through a screen to remove two is grit and bulky solids, e.g. plastics. Two primary treatment and number three is sedimentation to remove remaining solids. This produces sludge and liquor. Sludge is removed and treated, liquor passes to the next stage. The secondary treatment, this is biological oxidation. Using microorganisms and aeration removes dissolved and suspended organic matter so it has to be organic so microorganisms are using it for energy they're feeding off it so it's living matter uh, number six sludge is removed and treated seven liquor passes to the next stage four tertiary treatment filtration to remove remaining suspended matter and toxins from the liquor and it's now known as effluent after these processes effluent is discharged into a river or the sea the sludge produced has a number of uses um, heat treated and used as fertilizer is 10. Turned in its sludge cake and used for energy generation through 11 is incineration. Or the last one undergoes anaerobic digestion by microorganisms to produce 12, which is biogas, which can be used to generate electricity or heat. And here they are again. So that's your preliminary treatment. Removing your grit and solids. Primary, so sedimentation, so you allow the sludge to settle and you have the liquor. Liquor moves on. Then you bring in your microorganisms, so this is your biological oxidation, so they remove that organic matter that's left. And then finally, you have this last filtration stage of the um, liquor. And after it's filtered, it becomes effluent and it's safe to send it away to the river, to rivers or the sea. And remember, sludge, three uses. Um, you can turn it into biogas. You can turn sludge into fertilizer. Or finally, you can make sludge cake and incinerate it to get energy. So I mentioned right at the very start of the last lesson um, about things which end up in the sewage system which shouldn't be there and I guess there are people out there who use their toilet as a, a bin but um, one, one of the problems I think that maybe people do unwittingly is they put fat down the toilet so if you just fried your bacon or um, whatever what you're supposed to do is kind of mop it up with a kitchen towel and put it in the bin and um, but some people just let it drain away so this um let's have a look at this um maybe not if you've just had your lunch but have a look at this to show you some of the problems that uh, sewage workers have to deal with okay and um, we're going to do a little task i would have given you the printouts in the class but obviously we can't do that so you might want to um, take a take a photo of this or if you've got PowerPoint on your computer you could take a screenshot and then turn it into slides or something and um, what you could use they're, they're on OneDrive aren't they the um, the slides so you could do it that way but yeah you probably need a photo or you need some be able to refer to this in some ways shortly so we've got a very basic uh, town and a sewer 
and we're thinking this is a developing country because the sewer is taking the the sewage right out into the water and then we're going to have five points um one two three four five in different parts of the river and what happened in the various parts of the river was sampling took place so here are our um, different species of invertebrate which were sampled and as well as that some abiotic factors um, cloudiness and oxygen concentration were measured and also the number of bacteria were measured and you also need there's going to be some questions you also need to refer to this page so take a photo or whatever you want to do okay so effective sewage and biodiversity so using those two previous pages um, can you answer these questions so press pause and do that it's a bit of revision from earlier on but we're going to relate it to sewage right number one describe the relationship between the number of bacteria and cloudiness so as the number of bacteria increases the cloudiness increases so that would suggest that the bacteria are what's causing the cloudiness or they're producing something which is um, making the area cloudy what is biological oxygen demand this is a definition from earlier in the course from unit one so it's the level of oxygen used by microorganisms when decomposing organic matter in water so at which site is biological oxygen demand the highest so it's where you find the most bacteria and where the lowest oxygen is and that would be site two four if compi compiling a trend biotic index which species could be used as an indicator of high pollution levels and um, so you're picking out the, the species where you had the well it's at site two isn't it so sludge worm or rat-tailed maggot would be the indicators and then number five this would this requires you doing a wee year retable um i haven't put the you'd have to maybe going back to just to to go back to the equation as well so using simpson's biodiversity index calculate whether site three or four is the high, highest biodiversity um i'm not going to go through it i'll show you the equation again in a minute but um i'm not going to go back through it but what you should have is site three would be 0.68 and site four is 0.71 that would mean that site four had the highest biodiversity and then number six which organization would monitor the river's pollutant levels that is Scottish Environment Protection Agency or SEPA. And just to let you, um, if you have um, didn't get the Simpsons Biodiversity Index or forgot, this is the little equation. So have a, have a play about with it and hopefully you can get the, the numbers that were in, in the, 30 seconds ago in the video. And that is it that is uh, that's once you've done that that is all of the water section um completed so we had our two kind of big processes treatment of water before it ends up in your house treatment of sewage once it leaves your house and then before that we had the um we looked at things you could do in order to make sure everyone had a an appropriate supply of water desalination um, and so on